the crutches of other people. That we make other people crutches in our lives. Ooh. ooh. When, the, when, the, when the topic came to me, I told Pastor Tony, I said, why would I get this topic? Amen. I guess the Holy Ghost knew what he was doing. Amen. Because I didn't pick the topic. It, just was a, it was like it fell to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So that must mean God wants me to speak about it, I guess, doesn't it? Amen. So if I say crutches. See, a lot of times we make people crutches in our lives. Amen. And we make them crutches. That means what does it mean? It means we lean on them. It means we can't walk free. We need to lean on them. They're always, we're always leaning on Sometimes we lean on people out of fear. Amen. Out of fear. We have fear. Amen. And, uh, but I'm here to tell you that there's a place that Sometimes, you know, God, is, God doesn't put people in your life to be crutches for you forever. Amen? I mean, I know sometimes we do need a crutch, but it, you can't keep that crutch forever. Amen? You know, when I got born again, Pastor Louis became a crutch for me. Amen? I, he became a crutch for me. Amen? Every time, everything, woo! <laughs> Amen. But guess what happened? One day, I couldn't, he wasn't my crutch anymore. He couldn't be, amen. He had to, he actually listened. Sometimes he had to, when I came, when, the, when I got the call to come into the ministry, we had a plan that we thought I was going to be with him doing different things. But he released me and he said, I bless you. And he says, I know this is what you're supposed to do. So he released me and all of a sudden I was cut loose. I was cut loose on my own. Whew, whew. Amen. Because he was my crutch. And today he's not my crutch. Today he's my pastor. He's my friend, amen. How many know that somebody to be your crutch, you can cut them loose and say goodbye, and that doesn't mean they're out of your life forever, amen. And there's other people you have to cut loose, say goodbye, and they're out of your life as part of your destiny. But you can still be a friend, but they're not part of your destiny anymore, amen. So that's what we're going to talk about today is what we're leaning on in, the, in crutches, amen. Go to First John chapter 2. See, a crutch, <clears throat> really what happens to us, we believe we can't make it without it. If you break your leg, you can't walk, and you know, I can't, I got to have the crutch to be able to walk, right? But how many know there has to come a time when the, the leg is healed and you don't need the crutch no more? Can you imagine you found somebody that broke their leg and three years later you still see them with a crutch? What happened? Well, I, I, you know, I, I can't walk. But the truth is they can't. And we do that in relationships too, amen? Hallelujah. First John, chapter 2, look at verse 19. They that went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out of us, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Amen. He's saying that, uh, you know, sometimes, God, by, by the way, God... It, it, people always don't come into your life for, on a permanent basis. You got to get a hold of this. People don't always come into your life for a permanent basis, except, of course, your spouse, your children. Amen. And then there's close friends. How many have a lot of friends in here? How many have few friends in here? I don't have a lot of friends. I know a lot of people. I have a lot of acquaintances, believe me, amen, but I don't have a lot of friends. So you, get, you have to get the definition of what a friend is, amen, hallelujah. So the truth is, amen, that I've got friends, and they've stuck with me all my life, amen. Let me share this with you. Many years ago when I, uh, this, this, I became friends with this fellow, we, we were in the uh, army together. And then we came out, we went to college together. We even worked in the post office, working our way through college together. And then uh, he became a, an attorney. And then I went on and became a banker, hallelujah, by accident. And uh, so a couple years later, we were always friends. And when I took over this bank, I called him and said, I want you to represent me, be my lawyer. So he came over and he became my lawyer and we were good friends. And we would, you know, have it all philosophy together, and we'd go out, and I think I've shared this sometimes before, but we'd go out and have big dinners, you know, and 
talk about the problems in the bank and this, that, and the other, and have these big expensive dinners and drink several bottles of wine and smoke big cigars. And then at the end of all that, we say, we look at each other, what is really life all about? And he'd tell me, is this all it is, Hank? Good cigars, good wine, good dinners, and nice cars. And we would philosophize, amen, that life had to be more than that. Then as it goes on, you know, I get born again. Then I find out years later, I went into drugs, of course, and lost contact. But I got born again, and then find out later, I, saw, I run across him. He got born again. I said, woo, praise the Lord. But today, <clears throat> we're not close like we used to be. And we're still friends, you know, so to speak. You know, very rare. Maybe once a year, maybe I'll talk to him. Every other year, maybe. And what's happened is he's not part of my destiny anymore. Amen. He was with me, you know, he was with me and I was with him, etc. But now it's okay. You know, we're not enemies. We just drift apart because we go different ways, have different things. Now he's born again, he's a believer, but he believes a little bit different than I do. You know, he's more very very legalistic stint. And that's all right. He loves the law. He loves God, right? So what happens to us, amen, so there was a relationship that I had, amen, that I had to be able to easily learn to say and accept that, you know, he's still my, he's been my friend, but we don't have that relationship anymore like we used to. And it's okay because God puts people in your, in your path for a certain season sometimes. But in the end of the day, yet there are other people there forever. Hallelujah. We're going to cover why that is though, in a minute, amen? Hallelujah. You know, as I was thinking about this, uh, I read the book, and I said, well, I'm not going to do everything Joel said in the book. <laughs> Some of you read the book, and I will understand, amen? But God puts people in your life at certain times for certain situations, amen? I remember uh, when I first came to the lighthouse. Uh, I came to the lighthouse, and this was something new to me. And I had a lot of guys here and that had been here a while. And... Uh, they knew how to do all kind of things that I didn't know how to do. If the septic tank went bad, they knew how to fix it. I didn't. If the electric went out, they knew what to do with it. I didn't know nothing about that. Amen. And so uh, I felt I really needed them. And uh, in fact, I found out later that they would even manipulate situations that caused me to believe I really needed them. Now, I mean, if you don't know nothing about electricity, Pastor Clyde Ryan, you can tell me anything. I don't know what you're talking about. And I say, yeah, you know. Amen. It's just like, the, just like a car, you know. If they tell you the canoe valve's gone bad and you know anything about a car, you're in trouble. Anybody ever have the canoe valve go bad? <laughs> if you raise your hand, they got you. <laughs> so I found out I was being manipulated too. They think I really needed them even more than I did. And then I took the ministry in a direction that it was going to go after God and it was going to be God here all the time. It was about Jesus all the time. It was about the Word of God all the time. It was about praying all the time. And God used it and just caused them to rise up and to leave because they didn't want no part of that. And so when they're leaving, I said, well, what am I going to do now? I don't know how to, guess what? It's been 24 years, and God has always provided people to know to do what I don't know how to do. Amen. See, what was happening, they were becoming a crutch to me, and they knew it, so they manipulated Clyde to maybe think I needed him even more because I didn't know nothing. Until Clyde come in one day, and he knew everything about electricity. Amen. <laughs> amen. But so I, I share that with you because a lot of times, amen, we think that we need certain individuals. And a lot of times what's happening is they're manipulating us, amen, to, to feel that we need them. Amen. You have to watch that. So there comes a time, amen, that, uh, you know, when they rose up against me because they didn't like the things about Jesus. They wanted things just how they were doing it. So God changed that in 24 years. I still don't know that much about electricity. But I do know when you turn the switch on, it comes on. And I do know if you smell something that smells like electric, it's burning. Amen. So I share that because, listen, we have to understand, amen, that sometimes we are afraid to let go. And you have to be able to say, you know, maybe this person, these people aren't supposed to be in your life forever. And you have to be able to learn to say goodbye and let, just let folks go. Another thing happened when I came to the lighthouse. We had a board of directors. These were good men. Amen. And but uh, through a length of time, they all started leaving. And the truth is, if they hadn't left, 
we couldn't have gone forward in the destiny that God still has for this ministry because they weren't part of that destiny. It's hard to understand that sometimes because you love people, but they really were not called to be part of the destiny they were still flowing into in this ministry because they were stuck in an, on another period. Amen. And didn't understand that. And sometimes you see people go and you get upset about it, but you have to say, you know what? God's doing this. You know, because you can't, sometimes you can't go forward, amen, if certain people are still with you that don't have that same destiny and vision, amen? It can't happen, amen? And so as sometimes as those men left, it was like, it was kind of like sad and what's going on, and, uh, but had they stayed, we wouldn't be here today because they had no vision for the church. Although Brother Leonard, who started the ministry, did because he put in his, in his bylaws, he incorporated it as a church and mission of the Christian faith. I remember when I came to the board and I said, we're going to start a church. Some of them rose up against it. They wanted to change the bylaws, take church out of it. Why? They were stuck in another era. They were stuck in another opinion. Amen. But, so we couldn't have come forward unless they were gone. Now, nobody fired them. Nobody threw them out. But God moves people out. How many know that sometimes God's moved things around? Amen. Come on. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you is there was a point that we needed them. They, they, they helped us, but then there came the point that they wouldn't be able to be a help for the destiny. Amen? And you have to understand that. Now, I'm not talking about your spouses now. You know, somebody say, oh, i got to get another spouse. This one's not with my destiny. We're not talking about that. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Put a warning label on this message. Put a warning label on this message. Amen? Hallelujah. So like I said, sometimes we have to learn how to say goodbye. Amen? Sometimes you've got to be free. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There was something I saw here that was really interesting. And there's a distinction between people that are with you and people that are for you. Amen? There's a big distinction. And you have to see that, that you're going to have in your life people that are with you and you're going to have life in your life people that are for you. Amen. Let me go back a minute, amen, and tell another story before I go any further. It happened right here, and most of you even know it. How do you remember Pastor David, right? Pastor David Burgess. Well, I encouraged him, amen, to start the church. <laughs> I encouraged him. Amen. And then when it came, then there came time that it was getting close, I was like, man, because I leaned on David a lot. I guess he was kind of like a crutch. And I said, man, what am I going to do without David? And it, was, it bothered me, right? And then I said, but, you know, I'm the one that said this is your call. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so then he was struggling with it too. And so then finally one day I called him in. He was struggling. Remember, Clyde? He was struggling with it. One day I called him in and said, David, it's time for you to go. Amen. He wasn't being fired. He was being released to go do what he had to do because it was a struggle. Remember that? You were here. And it was a struggle. I said, it's time for you to go. Amen. And today he's doing the work of God. He's, he's, he's still uh, tied to us. He's still our partner. He's still part of our ministry. And uh, he's still a friend. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll do another. I remember the day Pastor Clyde said he was leaving. Whew. Man. Pastor Clyde, you know. I was like, what? <laughs> I said, I need Clyde. He's my crutch for the faith home. He did an awesome job for what? How many years? 15? 15 years. Amen. And so it was like, but you know what? He's not gone. He's still here, though. Amen. But I remember when he said that, man, that was, I had to deal with that. I said, man, I said, I'm going to do this. I said, you know, I've been, I've been used to Clyde all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so I, was, I said, well, you know, and so Clyde went on. But it's something that he's always wanted to do, work in that type of ministry. Amen. And, and so God released him into that ministry, and I had to deal with it. And guess what? We still going, right? And the good thing is Pastor Clyde's still here anyway. Amen? Hallelujah. Because he's still part of us. Amen? But he's not connected in that part of the ministry. Amen? So I share that with you because a lot of times, amen, I, I've been here 24 years. and 24 years, I've had to see a lot of those things happen. Amen? And they're not easy sometimes, but you have to learn how to say goodbye or you have to learn how to say yes. I believe God's called you to this and just go with it. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go back to being with you and being for you. When God someone's, wants somebody in your life, listen close to me now. When God wants somebody in your life, they're not going to be somebody that's always going to find fault with you. If they're from God, they're not always going to be finding fault with you. 
Do you hear me? Somebody comes into your life and all they do is find fault with you, that's not from God. They're not meant to be because they're not for you. They're with you. Amen. There's a difference. Let's go into that quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. Big difference. Let's look at this. When somebody's with you, they'll only stay as long as you perform perfectly. Hallelujah. They'll only stay if you meet every need that they have. They'll only stay if you don't make a mistake. See, there's a lot of people that are, they say, I'm with you. Watch out. That Then they're with you, and that means as, only as long as you perform to what they think that you should be doing, or only as long as they may, you don't make any mistakes, or only as long as it, you provide everything they need. In other words, you, you, you're always, uh, are you all right? It's like walking on eggshells. I mean, no, God did not send you people for you to walk on eggshells in your relationship. I've got to be careful when I say this person, because I say something, they're going to get upset. See, that's not from God. Come on. That's people that are with you. But then we have the other class. Somebody say the other class. And those are the ones that are for you. Say somebody's for me. See, this is a key. Are they for you? See, when you find people that are for you, then you're going to have a long relationship. It'll be tested through problems and situations will come up and disagreements and who knows what else. Amen. Faults and failures. But... They're for you, so that relationship will remain. How many know that's a God relationship? Amen? And how many know that's what we're supposed to do? And how many know that's the lighthouse, by the way? <laughs> when you're for me, hallelujah, you believe the best for me. Somebody say, believe the best for me. When somebody's for you, they're going to believe the best for you. Amen? It doesn't mean there's no corrections or anything like that. You understand that? But they're going to what? They want the best for you. When somebody's, amen, when somebody's for you, they don't try to control you. They don't try, when somebody's for you, they won't try to control you. But these things I can give you, these, these really apply to all relationships. Think about it. When somebody's for you, they won't try to control you. Amen. When somebody's for you, they'll give you room to make mistakes. I know Pastor Ralph's for me. Because he gave me a lot of room to make mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. And I made them. He didn't even have to tell me about them. I knew them. <laughs> Amen. But he gave me room. Amen. See, when you give somebody room to make mistakes, you're giving them room to what? To grow and go into their, into their destiny. Amen. Do you hear me? And that has to be the same way in all our relationships. Amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody room to make a mistake. What I used to tell my staff... It's okay to make a mistake. Just don't make the same one over and over. Amen? Do I tell them? Amen? It's okay to make a mistake. Just don't make the same mistake over and over because that means we didn't learn from it. Amen? Hallelujah. When somebody is for me, they don't need my attention all the time. Amen? If you're for me or somebody's for you, they don't need your attention all the time. They don't need to, you know, I, 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 I got to see you. I got to have you all the time. Amen? See, what's happening then, you're becoming a crutch. Amen? I'm not saying you don't come for counsel and ask questions, but I'm saying when you always, amen, I can't do nothing. You know, let me tell you this church, you know. There's, there's ministries, amen, that you've got to ask permission for everything. I mean, uh, uh, pastor, we want to talk to you. We want to buy a new car. Buy it if you've got the money. You know, there's actually ministry operates that way. Everything got to be approved through the, through the set man of God. I don't want that responsibility. I'm having enough time taking care of my stuff and my family situations. I don't need yours. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you want to buy a car, God told you to do it, just go ahead. Amen. Whatever. Amen. But there are, have you ever heard of that? I know you have, Ralph. It was called the shepherding movement. Remember that? It's called the shepherding movement. That meant that everybody placed themselves like, like me under my authority you're going to go on vacation now you don't work for me you just remember the church you come to me and tell me you want to go on vacation and get my approval no amen. i'm still trying to work my vacation out amen <laughs> but there, these are extremes amen and what happens there are ministries like that and people and that becomes a crutch 
Do you know many times a pastor becomes a crutch? The man of God is showing up. He's a crutch for everything. Amen. And I don't want to be your crutch. Amen. I want to encourage you and instruct you in the word as much as God shows me and encourage you, man, to be everything you're supposed to be in God. Amen. To be everything you're supposed to be in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I want to be for you. I don't want to just be with you. Amen. Let me say it again. I'm for you. I don't just want to be with you. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Because if you're just, I'm, you're just with me, then every time you make a mistake, it's over. But I'm for you. So if you make a mistake, I'm there to, if you want help, I'm there to tell you, let's get it corrected and let's go on. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. So I'm for you. Pastor Tony's for you. We're all for you. Pastor Clyde for you. We're all for you. Pastor Vernon for you. Tanya's for you. We're for you. Amen. We're not going to just be with you. We want to encourage you in the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Oh, you, okay, good. Amen. <laughs> God wants to bring the right people in your life. Listen to me. In every situation, he wants to bring the right people into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, like I said, the 24 years and been had the ministry in the church. Amen. Uh, there have been people that come through and people that aren't here. Amen. And people that aren't here, it's, it's not always that they were mad at us. It's not always that they fell away in sin. It's just other things come up, amen. And so they're still what? It's good to see, like Margarita. She's still our friend. Amen. But she's, she's, you know, she's with her husband. And it's a good thing to be with her husband at, at the church he goes to. It's a Spanish church, and that's what he likes. And when she came and she said she was leaving to go join her husband, I knew that she needed to be with her husband. But I also said, I love Marguerite. I don't want to see her go. So I had to say, I bless you and goodbye. But she came to visit today. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> see, those, these are people. These are people, even though they're not here, they're people that are for you. I know Marguerite is for me. Amen. She wasn't just with me. If she was just with me, she wouldn't even come visit. Hmm. Did you hear that? Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Praise the Lord. You have to help me out. I can't shout too much this morning. Amen. <laughs> These things I've just mentioned to you, they work in all areas of our lives. Amen. In friendships. Again, that's why I say I don't have that many friends. I know a lot of people. I really do. I have a lot of friends. I know my son will tell me every time we're going to say, Dad, everywhere you go, somebody knows you. Whatever that means. Amen. No, that's true. Amen. But that doesn't mean they're my friend. Amen. There are people who have been, they've probably been with me, but that doesn't mean they're for me. Amen. And because I say you're not for me, it doesn't mean that you're against me. Amen. Because when I say you're for me, that means if you're not for me, you're just with me. That means you're against me. No, it means that you've got another agenda. Amen. You have another agenda. Amen. Hallelujah. Relationships. Oh, my God. How many people in here still want to get married? This word ought to help you a little bit. Let's do it again. You want to get married? Do you want to get married? All right, let's look at this again. Do they just want to be with you? In all the connotations that means in a marriage relationship. Do they just want to be with you? Or do they want to be for you? This would be good marriage counseling here. Do you see the difference? Amen. How many of those nice-looking lady walk by or a handsome man walk by and you say, I want to be with you. But, does that, but that doesn't mean I'm for you. I just want to satisfy woo, myself, but that doesn't mean I'm here to help you. Well, let me put it this way. I'll be in the relationship as long as I get what I need out of it. The day I don't get what I need out of it, it's problematic. It's divorce time. Why? Because I just want to be with you. I didn't really want to be for you. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Ralph, you've got a relationship with your wife that she's for you and, she, and you're for her. It couldn't be because how many years now? Jeez. 46 years. How many know it couldn't just be a relationship with, I just want to be with you? By the way, can I? The older you get, you don't look as good as you used to. I mean, I still do, but you know. I, <laughs> so if you're just with somebody, they put it, they put on them a few extra pounds. Shamba. <laughs> they meant they lose more of that hair or whatever. All of a sudden, like, man, I don't want to be with you. Why? They were never for you. So in a relationship for marriage, you want people, God really wants you to have somebody that's for you, not just with you. Hallelujah. I thank God today, amen, that my wife is for me. Because if she had just been to want to be with me, she would have been long gone. Come on. She would have been bye-bye. <laughs> amen. Got to go. Why? Because I did some stuff. Amen that uh, wouldn't want her to stay with me, but she was for me. Amen? Do you hear me? So there's a big difference in this. Amen? Hallelujah. Even at my lowest point, she was there. She was for me. And so she encouraged me. Amen? And stood by me when I wouldn't stand by myself. I mean, if I was standing there and I needed, I wouldn't go stand by me. But she did. Because she was what? She is for me. Do you hear the difference? She's for me. Amen. Brother Lewis, your wife is going through a lot of stuff. So you got to be for her. You don't want to just be with her. If you just want to be with her, it wouldn't last. Do you all getting this? This is good stuff, by the way. Amen. This is good stuff. Hallelujah. Say it's good stuff. Somebody, this is good stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at that now. Here comes your mate. Or the one you think might be your mate. Let's ask the question. Do they only want to stay with you as long as you perform perfectly? In all aspects. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Do you only want to stay with them as long as they, 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 you're only with them because they'll give you everything you need? Well, I married them because I thought they had, they were going to really be, you know, uh, this, that, or the other. But they were. Your mate. It's real quiet, I know. Everybody's contemplating this. If they're just with you, then you can't make no mistakes. If they're just with you, you can't make any mistakes. Amen? It's not that we're looking to make mistakes, but we guess what we all do? Except Pastor Alice. Hey, this is a good word. You learn something. <laughs> but you want somebody that's going to be for you. Somebody that's going to do what? Believe the best for you. Listen, if you find somebody that wants to believe the best for you, grab a hold. That's from God. Amen? Uh, if you find somebody, amen, that doesn't want to try to control your life, that's from God. You know, in relationships, you can have controlling people. Amen? You can have controlling people. When I was reading Joel Stein's book, he had a... a little example in there. He said this lady that worked in his ministry, she noticed, he noticed that uh, every day this, she would get dropped off by this guy. Every day. Got dropped off by the guy. So one day he grabbed a hold of her and asked her, this is my version, okay. One day he got a hold of her and asked her, uh, uh, you don't drive? He says, oh, no, I, uh, I do, but I, I can't because, uh, you know, the, I don't know the roads here. He said, but you've been working for me for like two or three years. And he says, how come this guy always has to drop you off? Well, he doesn't want me to drive like that because he said I'll get lost and all that. So Pastor Joseph told her, he says, encourage her. He says, you can do this on your own. What was the guy doing? 
What was he doing? Controlling her. He was, he, he didn't read the book. He was controlling her. Amen. So after, amen, he encouraged her to drive. Uh, Pastor encouraged her to drive. She started driving. Then she started driving the interstate. Guess what? He said she found out that that guy left her, left her life. Because, see, how many know you can be manipulated? He was manipulating her, amen, to control her, amen. See, and, and so, if, so somebody that's for you is not going to try to control you. Do you hear me? They're not going to try to control you. You know, Pastor Allison never tried to control me. Well, she, <laughs> I, was, I was difficult to control anyway, but <laughs> the only time, amen, that she did try to, well, to control is because I submitted to the control. When I came back from Teen Challenge, amen, I, I turned, I said, I don't want to, I said, I don't want to touch the money. And she handled everything. Amen. And then one day she told me, she said, I'm tired of being in control. She said, I'm tired of being in control. You take charge of all this. Amen. And I am. <laughs> Amen. But see, that's when you know God's, that person is from God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know they're for you when what? They give, and we're repeating this now, give you room to make mistakes. In the marriage relationship, will you make, give your spouse room to make a mistake? From uh, burning the, the dinner to whatever, amen? Hallelujah. You give them room to make a mistake, amen? Uh, they take the new car out, and they come back, and it's all scratched up. Shoo! That's when you got to stop and say, okay. You go into low, slow, <laughs> slow down, and then this might help you. Can I live my life without her or him or without the car? I'd rather live my life with that person. I don't want to live. I don't need the car. I can get a car anytime. Amen. You see what I mean? You have to have a perspective. Amen? Somebody's for you. They don't need all your attention all the time. Say, well, how's that work in a marriage relationship? Well, let me show you. Amen. Now, I may know when you first get married, <laughs> nobody got to tell you this, all you want to do is be with them all the time. Come on. But now after you've been married several years, amen, how many know that, you know, you're settling in. It's not that you don't love them anymore, but, you know, you go on and now you start having some interest, you know, like hobbies or whatever it is. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor Allison never gets on to me from the times I go off. In fact, she may be glad I go off. I don't know, but <laughs> I told her, I said, <clears throat> Allison, I said, I'm going to the gun range and be gone a couple hours. She said, okay. She said, I'm going to work in the yard. It doesn't help in our place, amen. And she does her thing, and I do my thing, amen, and we don't uh, try to control each other about it. Amen, hallelujah, amen. In other words, when you get through what you're doing, you want to come home. In other, in other words, you're not doing it to say I'm going to stay away from home. Some people do things to stay away from home. She'll tell you, I'm one, amen, I'm a homebody, amen. So, amen. So anyway, th this is some questions you need to ask yourself when any kind of relationship, you know, relationship, especially in a relationship and marriage, amen. Now let me take you to, go to 1 uh, Samuel chapter 30. We're almost finished. Crutches. It's not natural. This isn't the natural way to walk, is it? So using people as crutches is not the natural way to live. Amen? It's not God's best. It's not God's way. Amen? Look over here. We want to talk about, we're going to conclude by talking about the spiritual. Amen. First Samuel chapter 30. Look at verse 6. By the way, let me set it up. Most of you know the story of Ziglag. Amen. All the, the town, was, they, everything was burned down. Amen. And uh, David's enemies had taken all his wives and all his men's wives and all the children. They'd lost everything. And uh, they were all against. They were all upset with him. They blamed him for it. Amen. But look what it says in verse 6. It says, David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. That would distress you when people are talking about stoning you, amen? 
because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, say, everybody say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David, see if people and all these men had been his crutch, he'd be in trouble. Because it says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. See, folks, in the spiritual realm, amen, in our spiritual walk, amen, we need to, be, we need to say that my, I don't have, my pastor is not my crutch. Uh, this minister is not my crutch. Amen. Because if you're a believer, you have within you, amen, the grace and the power of God, amen, do you hear me, to do things like David did to encourage himself in the Lord. I mean, we'll encourage you. We want to. In fact, that's what we try to do every time we give a message, try to encourage. Amen? But see, sometimes you're going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord like David did. Amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes, listen, I know I, <clears throat> Pastor Louie taught me a lot of lessons like that. One time I was fasting for a decision, this, that, and the other, and I called him up. Pastor Louie, this, 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 and this. He said, you know what he tells me? <clears throat> Sound like you need to hear from God. What did he do? He removed this real quick. Pastor Lou, what am I going to do? It's a sign you need to hear from God. Amen. No crutch. Amen. See, and we're made in that. Well, that's how we're made as believers. We're made to the point, amen, that we can hear from God ourselves. Amen. You know, I believe in prophetic ministry, but I don't believe in chasing prophetic ministry. I might step on some toes. But I don't believe in setting up a tent and going in. Pro prophecy's here today. I'm sorry. I know this goes on, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I got a tent. and Come on in. I'll give you a prophecy. It's, to me, it sounds like fortune telling. I'm going to be honest with you. But they, let's stop by the prophecy tent and see what the, the prophet got to say. Come on. God made you with spiritual ears to hear from him if you'll be real. If you have a relationship with him. Not just know about him, but know him, then you can come before God and hear from God for yourself. Amen. Now, the prophetic ministry is real because I am, listen, a product of some of it. In fact, I had a product of it. Amen. When God brought a word to me about when I was going through my illness, he sent a prophetic word to me. So I believe in it. But I wasn't chasing. Give me a word. Do you have a word for me? what's going to happen? No, God has a word. He'll send it to you. Amen. And then you can hear from them yourself. See, you've got to get this, amen. We can't, don't make these things, amen, that the, don't make the five-fold ministry a crutch. Amen. Don't make it a crutch. You know, if you're an evangelist, what's really the job of the evangelist? To encourage and train the people to be evangelists, to go do the work of the evangelist. But everybody thinks that Alex... It's called to do all the evangelistic work outside the church. But he's, you're supposed to come alongside him and let him encourage you and train you and go out. Amen. But see, then you can't make Alex the crutch. Well, it's evangelism of time. Whoa, let's go. Where are you going? Evangelism. Can't do it without Alex. Yes, you can. Amen. Because before he did it, amen, what? God had to speak to you sometime. You were trained up some. Amen. Do you understand me? Amen. In our spiritual walk, in our spiritual life, don't make things crutches. Amen. Because God deals with you. God speaks to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just like. Uh, now, understand this. Amen. You have the power within yourself to lay hands on yourself and pray for yourself. Amen. Now, there are times I know we need to get somebody just to encourage us. In fact, to me, a lot of times the prayer line is almost like encouraging time. Amen. Or maybe you just don't know how to pray or what to pray. And then that's where the prayer team or the prayer people are there for you. Amen. But the truth is, amen, listen, you have the power within yourself to pray for yourself. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? It's the same thing about, about healing, amen. You got the power within yourself to believe God, amen, for what you need, whatever it might be, whether it be healing, restoration, deliverance. You've got it. Listen, well, maybe, maybe not deliverance all the time. 
Because if you're bound up, you need somebody to help you with that one sometimes, amen? Because your mind is like, shh. But we don't want to talk about that today. But again, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Don't use ministry as a crutch. One more thing. The faith home ministry. The faith home ministry is 18 months. It's a season. It's not six years, 10 years. It's 18 months. And then there might be maybe some time, amen, that you want to go on into an internship, amen, to test the waters of ministry, whatever. But the faith home ministry can't be your crutch forever. Amen? Because that's why you have a graduation. You have now moved on. Amen? You have now moved on. You're no longer in the faith home. Amen? Amen? So don't use the faith home as a crutch. Now you get you involved in the church. Amen? And you've, you're well equipped to hear from God. You should be. Amen. Then you come to the church and then people are there to, to encourage you and help you. Amen. But it would be like this. is i got to stay connected to the faith home the rest of my life. In the aspect of what I need, the faith home to make me, help me make it through. No. If you stay connected to the faith home, and you should, you stay connected to the ministry as a partner. Amen. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that uh, Pastor Clyde is always available? But he's not your crutch either. Amen? Isn't that right, Pastor Klein? Amen. I ain't your crutch. You not remember we, what? We, we, God is the one that shows us things to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Y'all get this. Amen. Hallelujah. One more scripture. 2 Timothy 1.6. Second Timothy. Now Paul, speaking to his spiritual son, and he tells him, I'll put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. What's he saying? Timothy, I can't be here with you forever. Timothy, my name is Paul. But I'm not going to be your crutch. Timothy, I've trained you. I've shown you things. Amen. So you're going to have to stir up the gift that's within you. You can't come and say, Paul, I need a stirring. You got to say, I stir myself up. I stir the gift of God in my life. I stir it up. How many say, you got to stir yourself up? Somebody say, I got to stir myself up. See, there are times, amen, you got to stir yourself up. I'm not telling you there's not times you go in for counseling to get somebody. To, to, because I do that with apostles. I go ask them questions. And it always turns around. It always turns around me. Just tell me, saying, saying, finally, you got a situation to handle. But it kind of feels comforting for him to hear that from him anyway. But amen. But I know he's for me. Amen. Pastor Louis never been with me. He's always been for me. I mean, you should have seen him chase me down the road in his old station wagon when I had that little sports car. Remember the Fiero? He couldn't catch me. <laughs> That's who my pastor is. Amen. He would chase after me. He saw, I passed by one day, and he saw me. He took off blue and horn and come after me, but I knew I had him because he had that old station wagon and had that hot little Fiero. It took bzzz. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what happened. He caught me that day, but anyway. God's had it all worked out for us. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to stir ourselves up. You need to stir yourself up in the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, don't, don't look at us as pastors as crutches. Amen. We're not a crutch. We're here to encourage you and instruct. Amen. And things of ministry and things of, and things of life as best we can, as best as the Holy Spirit shows us. Amen. Then it's up to you. By point the finger to say it's up to me to follow God. It's up to me to hear his voice. It's up to me to pray. It's up to me to believe. How many know the Bible says, speak to that mountain? Amen. If you believe, listen, to be removed. It's you. He didn't say, well, if you go get uh, apostle so-and-so to speak to the mountain for you, it'll be gone. No, he said, you speak to that mountain. Who? The believer. Say, I'm a believer. Any, I'm a believer. any believers in the house? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember this, sometimes... People leave our lives. 
I'm not talking about your spouse now. Your children, they never leave your life. But sometimes people leave our lives, and, we're not, and sometimes as we wonder why, it can be, you know, it might even be sad. But I had this prophecy that was given to me on uh, August 12th by Randy Lester of 1999. In that prophecy, part of it, I read it this morning because uh, I remembered part of it. And just a small part of it, he said, he said, I've given you people that are for you in the vision. I went, whoa, look at that. Amen. 1999. I just read it this past week, this book, right? He said, I've given you people that, that are for you in this vision. There's other people that have come that they planted themselves, but they'll only be there a season because they're not really for you. But don't be concerned. They're going to find good places anyway. But they came for a season that I had to have them to be there for them. Amen. And they may have been some type of help to you, whatever. Amen. So we have to really learn to say goodbye without being angry, upset. Amen. And just say, you know, I'm glad you've been with us. I'm glad you to know you. Amen. I bless you. Do you hear me? Amen.